And I'm going to try to look at my... They're going to let me know. Let you know if it's up or down. If How I need are to you go up or down, they're going to text me. Yeah, but you ain't going to know it. I got it right here. Right there. I can oh, see so it. So we're live. We're live. Okay, let me see if I can find it. We're going to give it just a minute. It's going to be going pew, pew, pew on your phone, I bet. Yeah, but... Scroll up, not down. You're going the wrong way. That's reef. I, it's not there, though. Okay. So that's it. We're live. Delayed. Yeah. Okay. We're live. Yay, I can do it. Yay. It's not right backwards. It's good. We're just sitting backwards. No, it's good. No, we're sitting But backwards. it don't say the cock heel's not backwards. Oh, look. It says our words up now. I don't want that. Oh, I don't want that either. Oh, goodness. There it went. Nope, nope. I have no idea. <sighs> You're just so, looking at the comments. Last time. Hang on. We're not. We're going to get people on here first. No, I wanted to say what was going on about my eyes. What's wrong with your eyes? Well, last time I had my glasses, but I still couldn't see. And everybody oh. was saying I needed glasses. Oh, okay. Well, People suggested that I could read the comments on my phone, and I can. Yeah. That's just Facebook, though. You can't see the YouTube ones. Oh, no. <laughs> They're all right there. That's Facebook and YouTube over I can't here. see that far, though. Yeah. That's everybody over here. We'll give everybody a minute to get in here. And see, I can't. I can't. Can y'all tell us how the volume is? Yeah. Because. I have my main fellas. And unless Jacqueline's on here, I don't know if Jacqueline's on here or not, but I know Wes and Zach are on here. I got some moderators now. I got uh, Wes from Big Family Small Farm, and I got uh, Zach from Head Family Farm. Uh, they're going to moderate this thing, and they're supposed to be Let me know if the volume and everything's okay. And volume's good. People are saying the volume's good. Okay, good. Last time, I think I was low and you were high. Yeah. I'm wearing my headphones this time, so I can try to halfway keep up with it. And I'm going to try to not, yeah. not get my voice going up and down. So It should be okay. It should be okay. Now I'm going to start recording it here. Now. I'm going to minimize that. Get that out of the way. So we're good. We're good. I can read Facebook comments. I'm sorry I can't read YouTube, but. And Zach said everything looks good. And if you guys are not following Head Family Farm or Big Family Small Farm on YouTube or Facebook, y'all please go give those guys some love. Y'all don't know behind the scenes how much both of those lovely families help us out to no end. I'm talking about we couldn't we couldn't be doing what we're doing without those without those two great families. They help us out tremendously. That's right. So be sure to go over there and check them out. Give them a follow and um, tell them that Cock Hill sent y'all. Somebody just said, could you do your rain dance in Alabama because it's super hot and they are not telling a story. <sighs> y'all, I set this up about 30 <laughs> minutes ago and we're in this little can ham and it's got an air conditioning in it. And I, it, I came in, of course, the air conditioning ain't been on here because we don't come in here. This is my office. And so it we was don't want to leave it on all the time. It was over 100 degrees in here, so I cut it on, and it's now 82. So it's, it's cooling off. <laughs> I was sitting over talking to my mom, and I told Jason to let me know when he had everything set up in here because it's just not room for both of us to be in here while he's trying to set things up. That's right. So I had been over there for probably 35, 40 minutes yeah, or so. Yeah, it's been a while. And I sent him a message, and I said, are you ready yet? And he said, it's, it was over a hundred. It's dropped down to 85 degrees in here. And I thought, Hmm, that ought to be comfortable. Yeah. It's so, uh, and I got the air blowing right on us. It so it should be, now. it should be getting on up here. It should. Now we had some wind last night we did. and we actually had a severe thunderstorm warning that popped up. We did. It was a good indication that we were about to get wet. Right. Yeah. But pretty Not much, much it just sprinkled. Not much rain. It, Not much it rain. did a lot of. Yeah. But, I wasn't expecting that much wind either, to be honest with you. But it, it, it never brought the, the big rains. Yeah. But 
that's okay. We're we're better off than we were this time last week because we yeah. did get a little rain earlier this we week. We did get a little rain, almost an inch of rain. So with the rain last night and the three quarters of an inch we had prior, we got exactly almost an inch of rain in two days, which has been awesome. Yeah. Let's see. I think we're going. I think we're going through here. Everybody can hear us okay. I think everybody can see us okay. You know what somebody said a minute ago? What's that? That we needed to send some heat up there where they were in Canada and it was cold. Oh my gosh. You can have all you want. Yes. Um, but we are live from the Can Ham at the Cock Hill 40. This is Brooke and Jason over here at Cock Hill Farm. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful, wonderful day. And we are... Trying to stay cool. Trying to stay cool. Yes. Uh, um, as you guys know, we don't have much room in our camper and much less in the camper freezer. So with it being so hot, I decided I'd pick up some popsicles. Yeah. So it's become routine that every day we go down and we grab ourselves a popsicle out of the freezer that's in the barn. <laughs> popsicle hey, that's, breaks. That's, that's better than not having any at popsicle all. Popsicle breaks. Right? Yeah popsicle breaks it's a uh, it's crazy how a, a cold popsicle can cool you off it is crazy how cold pop, but it works so it, it really does. does work we've had a lot going on here on the 40 this past week oh my gracious if y'all caught the video to uh was it today it's yesterday <laughs> yesterday <laughs> my day is getting confused day yeah is. if y'all caught the video yesterday y'all saw that mr moo man got a new shelter uh Finally got him one set up there, and he is absolutely loving it. Him and the boys, uh, Topper and Crazy Joe, they are absolutely loving the new shelter to no end. It is hot here. I've been hosing down Nugget. I've been hosing down Moody. Yeah. Even with just... the shelter, I've been hosing. He'll come up there, and he likes me to hose him down, and so I hose him down. And uh, But they're about the only two animals besides the ducks and geese. They don't like it. but I mean, they like it, but... Nobody else. Uh, Peaches doesn't like it. Uh, Mary, Mary the goats pigeons, don't like it. Mary Cross pigeons yeah. like it. She um when it's when it's hot like it has been, she gives them water to bathe in. Right. And then while she's giving them water to bathe in, she'll sometimes just squirt water up so in the they air. Like it. And they like it. And she says that they like to fly when it's raining outside. That's what she told me the other day that they like to fly when it's raining outside. And she let them out the other day. She was getting letting them go in and out all the you know all day. That day that it rained, and yes. I was like, she was like, they like to get wet, like to get their wings wet, and I was like, that's yeah, her, her that's news to me. <laughs> her pigeon mentor, who is in Ireland, yeah, he told her that to let them fly when it rains, when it that rains. they'll enjoy, you know, getting themselves cleaned off, and and it'll actually help to strengthen their feathers because I guess they'll be a little heavier, yeah, and it'll make them a little, you know, a little more. I guess so. I don't know. That pigeon stuff above my head. Um, I don't, I don't know much about the pigeons. Mary Carl is the pigeon expert around here. And, uh, so much so that when we're riding down the road, yeah. she, I mean, she's just, she's wanting to know, right. Is that a pigeon on the power line? Is that a pigeon? And she's looking for bands is what she's looking for. I think. Is that what she's looking for? Well, you the know, bands when she on sees them? one that has a band on, she automatically knows that it was a lost pig, racing pigeon or yeah. Homer pigeon. And so, you know, she's always interested in the different colors. And I asked her the other day, I said, Mary Carl, you know, I want you, I want to do some things that, that you like. What, right. What's something that you would like to do? Do you want to go to that water park that we went to a few years ago? You know, I'm coming yeah, up with yeah, ideas. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's too hot to go to the zoo, but <sighs> she wants to go and see yeah. the, the aviaries again at some local zoos and see what that's looking like. And her answer to me was i want to go somewhere where i can feed the pigeons go feed the pigeons <laughs> and she means like walmart parking lot or places you know that that pigeons frequent and it's too hot to do that even it is too hot we actually went to lowe's was it yesterday or day for yesterday well we went today too so <laughs> well we went today too but you were going to go get something and she said daddy can we go out into the garden center and I'm thinking, go look at plants, flowers. No, I want to go look and see if there's any doves or pigeons or doves birds. Doves or pigeons or birds. Over there. in Because the, in, a lot of times, most people probably don't pay attention to it, but she does. She does. Um, yeah, th there's some days that we'll go over there and she'll see one and she'll be over in an aisle. And she'll be, whoo, whoo, 
Woo, making oh, yes. his call. <laughs> and you told me last night that you thought that you heard a strange bird outside. I, thought, I was like, what? I thought it was a seagull. And, and that you kept standing there trying to figure out where that I bird was. I was like, was. where is the seagull coming from? What is this seagull about? And and, I, and it was Mary Carl out there in near her pigeon loft area. And she, I don't know what kind of bird call she was making, but she was making some kind of bird call. So she, I don't know. I don't know. She was. Uh, somebody just said, are we ever going to see your mother-in-law? And that would be my mom. And y'all, we've said this before and we'll say it again. We're just respecting her wishes. Of, yeah. She's not interested right. in, in being on here. It may be that she'll let me put a picture on at some point. So you'll know she exists. But she's not comfortable being on camera, and we just we don't even bring it up anymore. Yeah, we don't it's bring it up. It's just something that we right. know that she doesn't care yeah. about. So, yeah, that's um, right. I well, think we hold off on questions to the end too. What do you think? Oh, it's just something that I could. I got you. Think of, but see, if I do that, then I'm missing all these. Yeah, but okay. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't know. What do y'all think's best? I mean, should we answer a few questions as we go? Because I feel like I'm kind of out of the out of sorts when I'm answering questions and trying to talk with what Jason's talking about. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I, I, so I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about that right okay. now. Okay, yeah. I'll put my phone down. <laughs> so if y'all are answering questions, no, I'm not going to answer them. It has been a crazy, yesterday may have been one of the biggest days yet on the farm. Uh, video coming out tomorrow to show y'all all that, but we had the power company show up. We got power on the the we got real power now. We don't have temporary power anymore. We got for real power now on both houses. Uh, meter set in. We're we're one hundred percent got power. The electrician showed up yesterday, which was not planned. And I'm going to tell y'all why. And I and I didn't talk about this in the video, and I probably should have. I was have. wondering if you did. It didn't cross my mind. So we got the power hooked up yesterday. They came. They got here. Early. Well, we knew last Thursday. No. We knew last Tuesday that there was a they were going to hook the power up between right. Friday and Wednesday. Yes, it happened Wednesday. It happened Wednesday. Yeah, he told me that. Um, which was yesterday morning. Yeah, he he said that earliest Friday, but no later than Wednesday. But he was leaning towards the Wednesday because they've just been so busy. And we got a temporary pole set up, and that temporary pole had power and it fed everything, but it didn't cross my mind. It has a it has a temporary had a temporary meter on it, just like a regular power box or whatever you want to call it. And it didn't dawn on me that when they pull that meter off that pole and put it into the new meter, that it was going to kill our power to our barn. It was going to kill our power to the pasture area, the gate. So we had no power. Luckily, we got our camper set up on a totally different pole. A different service. And a different thankfully. service. Thank goodness. Or we would have been without air conditioning for several hours yesterday, which would have been brutal. <laughs> um, and so I called my dad, who is who owns the electrical business, and I said, Dad, I said, it did not cross my mind that that they were gonna pull this temporary meter out and we weren't gonna have power anymore. And our deep freezers are off. Well, or, we didn't know that at the time when no, you called we your didn't daddy. Know that. I didn't know. Did, we, that didn't even cross my mind. We weren't thinking mind. about it. No. What, what we were thinking about was we had just moved Moody and the boys yes. into their new pasture area yes. where their shelter is with electric fence around it that gets dead. power from electricity. It was dead. They had the not been there 24 hours. No, that was dead. Mary Cross Pigeon fan was gone. Yep, it was, it was out, gone, and yeah. she said the pigeons were so hot. Yes, and so we were worried about that. Worried well, about that. I go down to the barn to get something, and Mary Carl says, "Mama, I need a popsicle." And I walk in the barn, flip the light switch on, and I said, "We don't have any power in here. The freezers, the freezers." And you sent me a text that said, "The freezers, Jason," and I said, "Don't open anything. Yes, leave it like it is." Don't open anything. I said, Dad said he is sending the guy over here to temporary get it all back going again. And I knew that. So I got on the side by side and started back up towards the house. And when I did, I saw one of the workers already up at the power pole. They didn't waste any time. No, they were because here. It's, it's an hour drive it for them to get drive. here. So thankfully, your daddy knew that it was a serious yeah. matter. 
and went ahead and got somebody over here because it was something that you knew how to fix or felt comfortable fixing. No, not that. Not the that big wire stuff. I just don't know much about plugs, switches, uh, interior stuff, lights. That stuff I can, I I can do. Um, but when it comes to the the big stuff, I I just just over my head. This is something that would have yeah. probably not been good if you had touched no, it live probably would not be i mean we know it was dead but we had to put it to live power yeah we had to connect it yeah. back up it's not like it was just a plug it was wired and i hard wired thankfully all that got going pretty darn fast but not only did that get going fast they stayed here and and finished up some stuff they're still not finished 100 percent on your mom's house but pretty close i was so happy to see him i said do y'all have to go right back <laughs> and they said no he told us that we didn't have a lot going on that we could stay and stay finish here. a few things yeah could stay here and finish a few things so and i'm as, so glad they did oh my gosh so as he was leaving y'all listen to this as he was leaving he pulled up to me because i was outside he pulled up to me and said i wasn't gonna tell you this <laughs> but i was gonna make it a surprise for y'all but I hooked up your outside lights on the garage because I wanted those on, a, we call it a dust of dawn. I, I don't know what everybody else calls it. We call it dust of dawn sensor, which means at dawn, the lights go off and at dusk, they come on. And he said, I got it hooked up. And uh, he says, so your lights should come on tonight. And lo and behold, y'all. Well, what happened was you and Mary Carl were watching TV. Yes. So I go next door to Mama's to take my daily shower. And on my way back, I don't, I, I didn't recognize it on the way out because I was going the opposite direction. <laughs> I look up at the house and I was like, because he had already told me, but no matter what you had told me, yeah. seeing it in person yeah. was different. Yes. So when I looked up and I saw those lights, I slung that camper door open and I said, Jason, get yourself outside. <laughs> and you came out. out and it was just the most beautiful sight. It was. It is. It was so nice to finally see some for real power out there. It was un believable it and was, i just great. loved the ambience that it gave off against the garage doors i think it was perfect it was not a bright you know overpowering no it's not overpowering it was just just was. the right amount of light and if you follow i posted the picture on facebook and then i put it on instagram stories and if you follow us on those you, you got to see the lights um show up and yeah it, it was it was nice. Uh, a subtle change down there that we haven't had at all. It's like we got excited when the barn light came on. We did. Down there at the barn. We did. Everything, everything's exciting at this stage. Everything's exciting. Yeah, it is. And Mary Carl, you know, she heard us all giddy about something and she said, what is it? <laughs> and Dyson said, look out your window. So <laughs> she's got the little heat, heat, what do you call it? Insulation. Oh, yeah, we got that now fixing to put in here you guys can see it i'm gonna put that stuff in there it's uh it's that reflectix i think that's what it's called and it it's keep, like it looks like silver bubble wrap and we keep it on the windows yeah. in the bedrooms and keep the shades down and closed all the time because air conditioners are working overtime They're running 24 so as soon as camper. i said that i heard <laughs> <laughs> and she was pulling the curtains up and looking out the window trying to see the lights and she was like oh they look Ooh. so good they do look good. They do look good. And I'm so. anxious to see the rest of them now. I know. We've got so many. I know. It's I, look good. Well, one step at a time. We get like three one lights at, at a time. time. Yeah. So that just makes it more exciting when three more get cut on, right? It does make it exciting <laughs> when three more get cut on. I think that's the only ones we got on Dust of Dawn. The rest of them are going to be on switches, Well, though. we did it that way because the rest of them are kind of like on windows that may be occupied. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And, and if, then, if, if, like, by say, door. Yeah. yeah, say Mary Carl's sleeping in that bedroom where we had the one of the barn lights coming over. You don't want it to not go off until the morning. Yeah. So they're controlled by a switch, which is okay. Yeah, that's okay. And they're LED bulbs now, and I think it said it lasted like 45 years or something crazy. So. But the breakers are not in at our house, if I'm not mistaken. No. So we so, can't, yeah. it's not like we can just go over there and flip them on and no, see how they and, look. Yeah, yet. and there's no switches or nothing like that in our house yet. But there is yeah. at Mama's. So we got, to at see, mom's. we got to see the fan spinning. The fan light, the fan spinning, the fan light, her bedroom light, yep. all the can lights, uh, all that. That's to be in the video tomorrow. So y'all stay tuned for that. That's right. Not only though, y'all did the power company show up, the electricians show up, the the Bigfoot, the Loch Ness monster <laughs> of our build, uh -huh. the cabinet maker. Yes. The cabinet guy showed up. 
and put not the complete cabinets in your mom's house. He put the boxes in, as he calls them. He calls them the boxes, but they are painted. They're painted. Yeah. And they are, um, I mean, it's it's a enormous difference in what it was. Yeah. Uh, we feel like they're complete cabinets, even though they don't have any doors on them yet. That's how much difference it makes. Yes, it, it looks, it's, it's a total transformation. I can't wait for you guys to see the video He did a wonderful job. He did a wonderful job. He did, and bless his heart, he has been extremely busy. And like everybody else we found in this business right now, in the construction world right now, they can't keep help or they can't find help. And he had, he got in that situation and he had like five jobs lined up and in a normal circumstance, everything would have went smoothly, mm -hmm. but this was in a normal circumstance. He lost some help. He, he couldn't find help. help and he got backed up. And he said that he's having a problem just, just finding product that he needs to build with. Y'all, we ran into this with our black sailing paint. Y'all, this was crazy. Black ceiling paint, we had to buy one-gallon buckets because the five-gallon buckets didn't have the right color base for uh, the mix We didn't paint. use ceiling paint. We oh, used, right. we You can't tint ceiling paint because yeah. it's already white. So we needed something that had a dark base already so it could be tinted to the color black that we wanted. And we wanted it flat. Yeah. And so a flat, deep base... Was impossible to find. Impossible to find. So we had to buy one gallons. Yes. And how many, let's see. How many gallons did we buy? I think 17 is what he used. 17, 17. gallons of paint. <laughs> and I had already read. He told us initially he thought it was going to take seven he, gallons. He did. He was a little off on that. But when we went to buy it, I told Jason, I said, I have read numerous times that spraying the ceiling on a non-flat surface yeah. takes a lot of paint. It does take And a they lot of told paint. us, they said, it's almost like you're doing it four-dimensional. Yeah, he's got to do it four times. They had to spray it this way and spray it this way. Because it's not a flat way. surface. Yeah. It was, it was so, you know, it was a, a weird-shaped surface. So right. It made it, but they didn't, they, they, even though they sprayed 17 gallons of paint, yeah. they kept their word on what they decided to charge us. They did. I mean, that's what a good, of course. That was awesome. It was awesome. Good business people are hard to find. They and were. They said, this is what we, you know, said we were going to do, and this is what we're going to do. They've been awesome. The two guys that we've, that we've hired to do the painting, the trim work, the sheetrock have been, have been top notch. They Just have. Just awesome, awesome. Um, they're the kind of person that you, it's like Greg. Yeah, you know, it's like Greg. Or Brant. You could ask them to do something, and you don't have to ask twice. Speaking of Greg. Yeah. As you guys know that follow us, know that we had a little incident, had a little accident where the um, the electrician accidentally hit the sewage line or I guess, is, that, is it called a sewage line, a safety tank line? Well, it wasn't the black perforated, you know, no, pipe. No, 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 it no, was the inlet that goes from, from the, our house yeah. to the safety tank. It was a four inch pipe. Four inch pipe hit that and didn't rip it out or anything, just knocked a, two holes in it. Yeah. And I, I called Greg that day, and he said, leave it alone. I want to come look at it, and I'll fix it. And he did come. He looked at it, and he fixed it. Yeah, he would have came did. that day when it happened, but it, <laughs> it actually rained that it day. It did rain that day. And the next day, Mary Carl and I were invited to go to his grandchildren, who That's are twins, right. birthday party. They were five years old. And Mary Carl, just, she, she's just a... a Little kid magnet. She's always she is. eager to go and, and play and she's do. She's so good with kids. She, yeah, she's very good with little ones. So not good with Not that she's young not. Children. I mean, it's not like she's grown, but she's really good with, with younger ones. For a 12-year-old girl, her patience is got to be off the charts. Yes. <laughs> and so she and I went to the birthday party the day after the accident happened. Yeah. And Greg said, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there first thing Monday morning. Fix that pipe. Don't y'all mess with it. Don't y'all mess with it. And sure enough, first thing Monday morning, he was. he was here fixing it. He was. He was here first thing, and he fixed it. He sure did. And we are so thankful for. So appreciative. So appreciative. Appreciative of everybody that has been helping us. I told and, the I told the cabinet guys yesterday, the two that were doing the installing, yeah. I said, I, I know y'all have been busy. And one of them looked at me, and he said, I haven't been working here but two weeks. <laughs> And that's just the way it is, you it know, is. people are it coming is. and going and I, I don't really know what the reasoning is or, or whatnot, but 
It's he, crazy times. He was honest. He said I hadn't been there for two weeks. Matter of fact, on our last video, not the moody one, but the one before that, I think, where we talked about the blackberries and painting the signal mm -hmm. black. Right. I saw somebody say, why is it taking so long for us to build these houses? Oh, I saw that too. And I just said, man, be honest with you. It's just, it's just the current times. It, that's exactly right. We are in the process of now we've got the spray foam done, the signal painter. Our next step is sheetrock. And y'all, sheetrock is hard to find. There was 14 pieces in the whole store of sheetrock and Home Depot that's near us. 14. That's it. And then I called a supplier that's a huge supplier. That's yeah. all they do is sheetrock. And I said, um, you know, I need 190 sheets of, of this kind of sheetrock and 35 of this. And he said, do you have an account with us? And I said, I thought, account with you? No. And he said, well, who's hanging your sheetrock? And I told him, and he said, I don't think they have an account with us. And I said, well, they may not. They usually get it from such and such. But I was going to check with y'all. And they said, well, to be honest with you, we're only supplying people that have accounts with us that we deal with on a routine basis. And they weren't trying to be ugly, but they yeah. couldn't supply me. I can't blame them. If, they, if you're not a big customer, then I totally understand 100%. Because it's just going to make those that are your loyal customers That's right. aggravated It makes perfectly good sense. And business so is business. I hung up the phone and... I ended up calling the supplier that Brant got all the materials from for our build. Yeah. And um, just a little small hometown dealer. G&H. &H. G H Hard uh, Building Supplies in Maplesville, Alabama. Mm -hmm. And I should have just thought to call them to begin with. But I thought. We didn't think they did cheat. Uh, I didn't think yeah. that they would be able. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, Keep no. Keep talking. I'm going to fix it. <laughs> We're losing it. What happened? It fell off the back. How? Uh oh Okay, we might have shifted positions a little bit. That's all right. We're here. That's what We're happens here. when you're live. That's what happens. This is Your real camera life. falls down. This is real life. <laughs> but now you can see me holding my water bottle. You couldn't before. You want me to no, just leave it alone. Leave it Don't touch it. So anyway, <laughs> Mr. Leonard, the owner, yes. was able to call me back and tell me that he could get the sheetrock for me, along with the mud and the corners and the what else did I have to have? The tape and the screws. screws. And it's all going to be delivered next week. He did. Yep. And he had to find it. He didn't have it in stock, yeah. but he did find it for He us. rounded it up. Yes. He had to go through, you know, a couple of different stores and That's right. um, appreciated it. And if I had thought of them, I would have called them first. But I just wasn't thinking that they would be able to supply that. Well, we, called a, we called a couple other local people, too. But they, um, they, he stepped up to the plate. So, I mean, just... Yes. That's what he did. He stepped up to the plate. And we are always willing to support the local guy. That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Who? What else? Did anything else? Yeah, a lot happened. Um, I got a letter yesterday. I oh, was gosh. getting the mail. This is yeah. a weird happening. This is a weird happening. <sighs> so I get a letter, mm -hmm. and it's from, it says the IRS. And it was from Clay County? Alabama, I think it was Clay County. I don't know. Or, yeah, I think it was Clay County. I don't Anyways, know what county it was. Here. It wasn't from around here. Yeah. Anyway, I thought, what in the world? It's addressed to Cog Hill Farm. Mm -hmm. And so I open it up while I'm at the mailbox thinking, is what, crazy. what is this? Yeah. So I open it up and there's all mm -hmm. this gibberish that's typed up and and it's it's illegal documents. Yeah. and But it doesn't have our, either of our names on it. No, it didn't have either of our names on it. It had and our it, business name on it. And it didn't have Mary Carl's name on it. Didn't it didn't have Mary Carl's. And it was a child support letter. For child support to be to start taken out of Cog Hill Farm. And it was like, it to me, for the way I read it was, is it as that we had somebody working here that we're supposed to start taking child support <laughs> out of their check. <laughs> and I was like, well, we don't have anybody working here. It's just me and Brooke. That's it. So Jason wasn't with me when I got the letter. <laughs> And Fuck I had thing. his lunch with yeah. me and I go into the camper with his lunch and I had that letter and I said, I don't know what in the world this is, but it's addressed to Cog Hill Farm and they're wanting us to take money out of somebody's check. And he was like, what? And yeah. I showed it to him and it had a phone number on it. Had a phone number and on it. At the time, I had ran to town to get a piece of wire that the electricians were waiting on specifically to make Mama's air conditioner run. That's right. And so before I took them the wire that they were waiting on, 
I got on the phone. Yes. And I called this number that's on this letter. And it was like Clay County I don't courthouse. Know. I don't even basically. want to say what county yeah, it was. I think it was Clay County. I may be wrong though. The the gentleman that signed the letter, yeah. I, I told them they the lady that answered the phone wanted to know who signed it and I told them and they said, Well, let me get him for you. And I thought, <laughs> he you know, this is he's this is crazy. He's a high, you know, ranking official yeah. for yeah. me to be going to talk to that's right so he gets on the phone and i tell him who i am and i said i just got this letter and it's i don't know who these people are <laughs> i said we don't have any employees at this business yeah nor do we have any unknown children <laughs> that need child support and the, the funniest thing y'all listen to this now oh, well wait, like, wait wait okay <laughs> so he's talking to me and i said look i said here's the only thing i can figure the only thing that i noticed that was even remotely close yeah. to anything relevant with either of us is the social security number is one digit off from mine. One digit. Yeah. And I, I read it. I read it several times because that one digit looked, it, if you weren't paying attention, you could have mistaken that for my social security number. Yeah. Even though it's a digit different. If you're reading it real fast, that's right, what it right, looks like. Right, right, right. I told him, I said, this is the only thing I can figure. I'm not trying to come up with a solution, but I think that the reason it happened has to have something to do with this social security issue. Yes. And he said, Cog Hill Farm. <laughs> and I said, yes, sir. He said, let me tell you something. He said, I've watched y'all's videos before. He was a fan of the channel. <laughs> and when this came across my desk, I thought it was a little bit odd. We ain't got no employees. I don't think he, he was so invested in Cog Hill that he knew all the details, but he had watched our videos before. Yeah. And here I was talking to him on the phone about child support for some kid that we don't even know. That's right. Yeah, it was crazy. And he said, look, he said, Miss Cog Hill, don't you worry about this. I'm putting <laughs> notes in the computer right now and it's going to be taken care of. And I said, well, oh, okay. Man. And I put the letter down and I took Mr. Doug his wire and on went with the day, but. That yeah. was the weirdest thing I have ever had happen. It was funny, though, that he had watched the channel. It was that funny. Was, that, that was he funny, had, yeah. And I was relieved to know that our identity hadn't been stolen or it wasn't something, you know, that's... No, uh-uh. It was, it was a... I think it was a true fat finger mistake. I, I think so. All the other thing else I can figure is, is that this, this gentleman that was supposed to be paying child support told... The judge that he worked at Cock Hill for. That's the only other thing I, I can remember. I don't think that's what it was because it's it was a, a woman. letter. Well, it was a letter for us to start garnishing the wages yeah. of three hundred and eighteen dollars of every paycheck to this guy. Yeah. For child support. For a thirteen year old. The birth date was yeah. one year different than Mary Carl. It was crazy. And the social security number was here. was <laughs> one number we off. Don't have any employees here. We don't have any we need some employees sometimes but we don't have any employees yeah, so. we need some employees sometimes i don't know i don't was, know what was that crazy was about now it was crazy it, hopefully, hopefully it's handled i, hope so it's too. Handled. I don't if have I to could... go to court for nothing that we had nothing to oh my That's gracious crazy. i just <laughs> i just don't know i didn't know what to think unless unless you know old peaches may have some kids we don't know about you reckon i don't know I think it's more like Joe might have some kids that nobody knows about. Crazy Joe. Oh, crazy Joe. Oh, my gracious. So, he is crazy. Y'all, I don't know if y'all noticed or not, but Joe's been on a big rowing spurt. You Joe know, is a big man. That is a big goat. And I don't think you would notice. I don't think people notice it because he's in there with Moody. If Moody wasn't in there... People, I think people would be like, my gracious, that's the biggest darn goat. I think so. Too. He is a big boy. Well, when we went and got him, <laughs> I can remember us bringing him home and mama saying, that's the tallest goat I've ever he's seen. Got legs now. Now. He got some legs on him now. But now he's filled out and he's not just tall. He yeah. is tall and big. He is. He's like, he's like a Holstein, but in the goat breed. He is big. And it's so funny. I took a picture of it yesterday, but... <laughs> Him and Moody side by side, and I know you guys get a kick out of it, and they are just the funniest thing standing there. They are. They are hilarious. And I tell you what, what happened. Since I moved them in, you, what I was doing was as I was putting a boy, because Moody's smart. Yeah, He's he smart. Is. And I, I called him today, and I figured out exactly what he's doing now. So what he does is, is I put Moody's food down first. 
And he's like, okay, I'm going to eat my food. And I go pour the goat's food. Well, Moody knows he's way bigger than they are. So he'll go and he'll bully the goats out of the way because he's way bigger. And he'll eat their food. And then he'll run and go eat his food. So he thinks he can get best of both worlds. Uh -huh. Well, I saw him yesterday. I caught him doing it yesterday. And he did it. And y'all should have seen Joe. Joe ran behind him. And Joe stands up as high as he can uh -huh. now. Y'all, and he rears back. Just, he, just don't come down because you're going to do the computer if you do. And he hit Moody in the back of the leg about five times. Of course, Moody don't even move. No, he does not. And bless his heart. So this morning, because I got to get their porter hood in there. Because that's how I was putting their food in the porter. Because Moody uh -huh. can't get in the porter right. hood. Um, so this morning, I stood by their food and guarded it. And Moody, lo and behold, stopped eating his food and came over there and sat there. And stared at me the whole time. And then when the boys just about got through, he ran over there and went and ate his food real quick. He's a smart man. He is a smart cookie. But I tell you, if you don't think he'd knock you down, you're crazy. He's much bigger than you. Moody? Yeah. He is. But you know what? Today, when he, he came, he does that running business. And, and, um, and it, <laughs> he is intimidating. Now, this is a, I don't know how much Moody weighs. 1,200 to 1,600. No, he well. 1,200. He's much more bigger than He's that. He's a big boy. And when he's running wide open, <laughs> you can feel the earth move. <laughs> well, let me tell you what happened to me yesterday. Okay. So we got finished. We got finished, you know, putting the, the shelter together. And we knew we had to fix them some water before we went and got some That's right. lunch. That's right. And so I was still in there with them right. when you took off to go get their water troughs. Well, you took off to go get the water troughs and make the fence hot at the same time. Yeah. Well, I'm still in there. Here comes Moody coming straight at me. And so I go to get over the fence. You know, I, mm -hmm. I know I need to get out because he's just running, you know, yeah, and yeah. You, he can knock you down and do some damage. So I get out. <laughs> I get out of that net and I step over onto the other side. Well, where you've got it is kind of viney and woody. And, yes, yes. and I had shorts on and I had little short shoes on. And so I'm in the woods because I wanted to get away from Moody. <laughs> And I'm thinking the whole time he has just cut that electric fence on and I got to go through this. I mean, oh, it was gosh. stuff I couldn't see the bottom oh. and I was hurrying trying to get, cause I thought the fence <laughs> was hot, hot. <laughs> and he was still coming towards me. And it wasn't that I was scared of him as much as it was. I wanted to get away from the fence before it yeah. got hot. That's true too. And I was, Oh my gracious. I, I wish he's a big boy. I was hollering at you and you couldn't hear me. He's a big boy. Now today though, he come, he did that running business and I, I, held out my arms made myself real big and i said i said whoa boy whoa did and he whoa he whoa and he stopped and he sat there and bless his heart he looked with a big old puppy dog eyes he's like oh I just, i'm just gonna go over here and see what joe and top doing and that's what <laughs> it's kind of what he was looking like uh -huh. and i was like nope you're not gonna eat the food boy you're not gonna do it and um he didn't he sat there for with his big puppy dog eyes with his lip poked out looking at me and um, I said, I kept telling him to go eat your food. Your food's right over there. Go eat your food. You're not going to have your cake and eat it, too. You're not going to eat their food and then go run and eat your food, too. Go eat your food. And finally, like when they were almost finished, he ran and went and ate his food. Well, I finally. guarantee you that Topper and Joe hadn't missed a meal because you can tell. No. You can tell that they get their fair share. <laughs> no matter if Moody eats some of it or not, they, yeah. they get their fair share. Yeah, but, all of them. All of them. We, we got well-fed animals around here. <laughs> I just I just knew that I was going to get into that hot fence. I'm glad and, you didn't. And I was in the woods already and had shorts on because I was in the pasture the whole time. If but you'd have got in that hot fence, you'd look like Michael Jackson. I sure nowhere. would have. You would have wished you had a camera set up. <laughs> I would have ran in there with Moody's what I would have done. And then it would have oh, been a rodeo. Oh, my gracious. And I tell you, that electric poultry netting, I don't care how young you are or how agile you are. You're going to step over that thing 10 times, at least three out of the 10 times, your foot's going to get caught on that electric poultry net and trying That's to get right. it. I don't care. You're going to get caught in it. And then you're either going to fall flat on your face or you're just going to trip. And it Well, Jason tripped time. on it when it was laying on the ground I yesterday. Did. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we didn't even have it up and he already tripped in it. Oh, it, it happens every time. Even, even when we had our chickens in it's, it. Over it's a, a booby trap. It is. It, it, I don't care. You gonna get you gonna get tripped in it no it's matter what. It's a booby what. trap. 
no matter what. As long as our animals going to get tripped in it, we're okay. That's right. And they're not going to because we got power back on it and they know to stay away from yeah, it. Yeah, it don't take them long. As a matter of fact, I, I don't even think they would have got it. I don't even think I got to put power on it, to be honest with y'all. I just do it for my own self because I keep thinking something they're going to get out. Well, but... we don't want anything to happen to them, obviously. No. And we don't want them to get into something that they shouldn't be eating. That's right. And therefore, it's going to stay on. That's right. <laughs> That's right. It's going to stay on. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the black ceiling. Let's talk about the black ceiling. Well, we told y'all it took 17 gallons of paint. It did. 17 gallons of paint. And the guy sprayed it. That's right. And we really didn't know. I mean, we've seen enough of it in person in restaurants and industrial type situations to know that that's what we wanted. Yes. Or we thought anyway. We thought. Yeah. We thought. And... Lo and behold, it's just what we wanted. Yeah, it looks really good. I mean, to us. When I mean, he we took like the plastic off the floors, it made all the difference because we were peeking in and out all yeah, day. We were. You know, and when it had, when it was wet, it had that glossy look to it. And it that's did. not what we were after. And we kept saying to ourselves, I hope it, I hope it dries flat. I hope it dries flat. And it, it's just what we wanted. And we know that it may not appeal to everybody, but that's what we wanted. And yes. I feel like we've accomplished what we were after. Yeah, that was one thing that that we wanted and didn't I don't didn't know how it was going to turn out. Well, we were kind of scared. It was of like course. a check mark, you know. We were so happy that it turned out well. And you really can't tell. I mean, we can see what it's going to look like with drywall and shiplap more so than you guys probably can. But it's going to be so much different once oh, yeah. we get the finished. Oh yeah, oh yeah, product. it's going to look really good. It's going to look really good. It's going to look really good. Um, I did see some people had asked on um some previous i guess it was a yesterday's video what are mama ceilings if ours is black what are mama's mama's is just a regular old height 10 foot ceiling yeah. so it's just it's just sheet rock. it's just sheet rock yeah. painted white it's just a regular ceiling which is what ours will be in the rest of the house yes it's it's only this way in the upstairs which is the loft mm -hmm. and the den kitchen area which is the big cathedral open ceiling that's right so um that that's what we like and we're very pleased with it we are. It, it was, you know, something that you don't know how it's going to look once it actually happens. But uh, it turned out well. It a turned lot, out really well. A lot of people have said it's going to get dusty. It's going to get cobwebs. It would if it was white. Yeah, it I would. I mean, yeah. it's going to show up more because it's black. Right. But, hey, it's what we wanted. And we only live once. So we, we did what we wanted to do. That's right. I can get a, a pole with an extension that, that can get those cobwebs down. I mean, I can yeah. find a solution when we need it. That's right. But it's yeah. what we wanted, and we weren't going to change our mind just because of a cobweb or it, a little dust. Or, and it turned out perfect. It turned out just what we wanted, it just did. what we were after. Mm -hmm. um, oh, I was going to talk about the shiplap. The shiplap, we got that handled now. Yes, we uh, found somebody that we could buy it from in bulk. And we're not doing the whole house. You'll just have to stay tuned to see what all we chose to do and not do. Because um, it wouldn't make sense with me telling you. You'll We'll have to point it out and show you. What's wrong? Nothing. I'm just checking, make sure things okay. You're good. Um, but yeah, we'll show you on a video once we get the shiplap what we're going to shiplap and what we're going to sheetrock. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. I, I was thinking about something. I else. see you yeah. thinking about something else. I'm kind of worried. <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> my mind, my mind went somewhere. Yeah, we're going to show everybody what needs to be uh, shiplap and what we're going to sheetrock. Um, but basically. The um the the main room is shiplap, and then we got two where our headboards are gonna go in the bedroom. Yeah, we're gonna shiplap those walls, and, and the that's rest why of it's I said I'd sh we would show yeah. them because it's kind of hard to point it out what's hard. what, yeah. and um, we're, we're not gonna do the whole house in in shiplap. No, and we originally thought about doing the bathroom in shiplap, but we've changed our mind on that too. Yeah, we did, <laughs> and it may be that you know if we just have an overabundance of shiplap left, and they do the shiplap first. Then we may put some more in a couple of accent walls, but it won't be an entire room. Yeah, it won't be an entire room. Just um, the den. Yeah, and I was glad to find the ship out. We got it locally yes. as well. Yes, in uh, Maplesville. In Maplesville at TaylorMade. TaylorMade Lumber. And thank goodness for that because we had found it in Birmingham and we had found it somewhere down south. Flomaton. Yeah. Flomaton. And, and I didn't want to have, you know, my, my fear was they're sold by the bundle. 
which is a certain number of pieces. Yeah. Ours is going to be 128 pieces in a 16 foot bundle. Right. And I could see me needing 130 pieces and have to go to Flomaton, Alabama for two pieces. Two more pieces. Yeah. I mean, That'd not that crazy. they don't sell it at Home Depot or Lowe's, but it's different when it's, when it's mealed at a local meal. And we looked in Flomaton's like what? Three hours? Yes. It was a three hour drive. So that would uh, be six hours total. And plus this place is cheaper. The local place is cheaper than yes. either of those other ones that we found it at. So um worked out good. We do plan on painting it. It is a pine and it's he said it's not a lot of knots in it and it's not gonna be a lot of waste, which is what I've seen with a bunch of it. Yes. I've seen that it'll be a bunch of waste because it'll have a knot that's in a place where you can't right. get that's out right. of it. He said it's not going to be much waste at all. And 16-foot pieces. 16-foot yep. peaches. Pieces, peaches. Peaches. I don't want a 16-foot peaches. <laughs> I, I couldn't afford to feed it. <laughs> I couldn't afford to feed a 16-foot peaches. No, I don't think any of us could. Oh, my gracious. But, um, yes, the installers were happy to hear it was 16-foot pieces. Yeah, they were happy to hear that. And Peace so out. the plan is to, get, to go pick up that um, maybe mid-next week. They've got to mill it. And they will dry it in their, how do you say that word? Kiln. You know I can't say nothing. I right. know you can't. That's why I wanted you to say you it. You set me up. I set you up. <laughs> it's a kiln. <laughs> so they're going to dry it. Is the it. N silent or the L silent in that? I don't know. K-I-L-N. Kiln. 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 I don't know how you say it. I just saw a, a little uh, message that wanted to know if the boards were going horizontal or vertical. And they're horizontal. Going, they're going horizontal. Yeah. We're not going to go up and down. We don't have any right. any structure going that way mm -hmm. to enable it to be nailed that way. And we like the look of the. Yeah, we like the look of it going horizontal. Yeah. yeah that's so, the way we like it. Yeah. I know people do put it vertically, but we have plans to put it horizontal. That's right. Um, yeah. That's our plan. So on to the stair railing. And we've had some questions about what we're going to do there yeah we still don't know what we're going to do we still don't know what we're going to do i love the look of the the it, it's pipe industrial pipe mm -hmm. railing yeah and it looks good i like that too uh just trying to figure out the um post the, situation yeah all of that and i don't know how that'll work um we can have a big post at the bottom and a big post at the top but the center would have to be a smaller, and I may get with those guys and ask them. Yeah, the sheetrock, yeah. drywall, um, shiplap, um, painters, they said that they could put they the could railing the up railings for too, us. Yeah. And we also like the look of what's called a hog panel, and um, it would be black, of yeah. course. But we're just, we're undecided. I mean, it's kind of like we'll cross that bridge when we get there, I guess. I like the, you know, the hog panels where I was leaning the whole time, but I, I like the pipe look better i like the um, pipe look better too yeah. we just got to do some more investigating and try to right. figure out you know exactly what we need um it would be it'd be like a six inch wooden column on the on the on the stair itself and it would be like black galvanized type pipe um four or five rails going to the next what do you call those banisters or what do you call it? yeah we don't want to we don't necessarily want any wood on the top rail yeah we would like it to all be metal and therefore, it's going to have to be a pretty sturdy post in the right, middle, right? Because there's not going to be any kind of wood to hold it from post to post. It's just going to be so kind we're of thinking, anyways. But we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. And then we've we'll got to pick out flooring for the loft area. Yeah, we knew that pretty quick too. I um, figured up how many square feet we needed. The loft is actually 440 square feet. Really? Yes. I measured all the. Now that's not including an attic. I didn't yeah. measure the attic part. We're not going to put floor in attic. Then. No, yeah. but I didn't need to measure it. Right. So, you know, it, it that's a pretty big area. That was going to be Wasted. nothing. Yeah, we're, we're originally wasn't going to be nothing up there. But <laughs> now but now with the um, with the addition of the loft, it is 450. What would you say? 440 square feet. 440 square feet. I measured wow. it with the bathroom. You know, I, I'm thinking that's going to be mine and Mary Cross TV room up there. Well, so I keep thinking. You never know. It's going to be a flex space for sure. And yeah. I'm thinking that we will never regret having added. I agree. It. I, I mean, agree. It's, the ceilings were going to be open anyway, so it didn't matter. Mm -mm. And it was, it was a little bit of cost was involved in that. Um, what do you call that stuff? The uh, floor and the decking. Yeah, but what's it called? Subfloor. 
the subfloor decking that's still part. That's not yeah. what I'm looking for, but that's okay. Yeah. My words don't come to me sometimes. You, you got me. We'll you, be okay. I rub off on you. Hey, our interior doors are in. Interior doors are in. We're kind of, kind of wait to get those over here until the guys finish sheetrock. At least we're hoping that's what we can do. Yeah. We also went to look at um, countertops for your mom's place today. Yes. We did on that. Mary, and Carl, and Jason were able to go catch a movie. We did. And I went and kind of talked to the countertop guys about mom's countertops. But I needed Jason's help in trying to pick something out. She told us exactly what she wanted. And we knew it was going to be in a in a outside environment. Right. Because... The slabs are actually there on site. The slabs of granite, yeah. marble, whatever. And Mama said she just can't stand the heat. It's hot, y'all. And I can't blame her because yeah. I, it was hot. It was hot. It was hot. It's hot. So you you went to the movies with Mary Carl. I went and talked to them. Told you I needed you. We went back over there and we had some good ideas after leaving about our house as well. We did, and I, I've I've loved marble. For I mean, I wanted to put marble in our other house, um, and, and at the time, it just seems like marble was hard to get. Well, for he some said, reason, but now it's. He told I told him I said when we put our countertops in, I said you know our our idea would have been to put marble in, but it just wasn't cost effective yeah. at the time. And y'all, the marble was actually less expensive than the quartz. It was, and, and I we love it. We oh love gosh, the way I it love looks. Love the marble. And the granite is just not available in light colors. Yeah, the granite is not. Yeah, I like the white because we're going to put dark cabinets. Yeah, so it needs to I be like a lighter white background. White with the, the, the gray and charcoal. The veining. Yeah, I just love marble. It looks so beautiful to me. And um, just love it. And so if you want to see, I posted a little video on Facebook and Instagram stories too of us looking at the marble today. So they've got to come out and measure mom's countertops i took the measurements with me however yeah. they can't go off what i said because right. they're the ones that are oh, installing yeah, 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 yeah. it so they actually send somebody out to take the actual measurements and he said that should happen in about a week well after they take the measurements it's going to be about three weeks yes. and then they'll install the countertops so i think mom's probably about a month from moving in you think i think yeah, I mean I'll, fingers crossed on that man. i don't know why not the I only thing we're going to be waiting on is countertops yeah, because cabinets are in. I mean, we got to get the doors, but he's not going to put the doors in until the cabinets, until the countertops and all that's done, right? No, no, no. He'll put them on. He'll put the doors on before mm -hmm. the countertop? I think so. Okay. Um, So he's just kind of, we do have to have the sink put in before the plumber can hook the stuff up. Yes. And the sink comes in the countertop. Yes. Because it's an undermount sink. So. <clears throat> so once that's done, we can call the plumber and he can come finish up. That's right, but we're probably, we're probably, I don't know, you know, you always get antsy and say a month, but it may be two months, be two months. <laughs> but I'm saying a month. I, I, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed fingers it's going to be a month, fingers and that's crossed. on moms now. Ours is going to be yeah, a little ours, longer than that. Yeah, ours is going to be longer than that. I keep telling you three months, and you, It's like, not going to be three months, I can tell you that. I keep thinking three months. It's not going to be three months. Y'all remember this podcast or this video when yeah. I say three months. It's so not, what, this is what? This is June, July, August. I'm thinking September. Mm -mm. We're going to be in by the 1st of August. September. <laughs> We're going to see. Oh, We're we going to see. And the, the cabinet guy told us to go ahead. He needed our color for our cabinets next, next week. week. And so, so we've we, been we've been scram, scrambling trying to figure that out, too. And we stopped at the paint store on the way home and picked up a couple of samples of yes. some colors that we've been looking at. And we got to get those. I don't know what we're going to put them on. To, it needs to be something big. It does. I, don't I know mean, yet. we need like a big old billboard or something <laughs> with it with it painted on it so we can see. What if we could put on cardboard? I guess cardboard, too. I guess it may work. It'd be probably. I don't know. I don't know. We'll figure it out. We'll figure something out. We'll figure uh, the, something the color out. we're looking at is uh, Cheating Heart and Wrought Iron. Both are Benjamin Moore colors. And it's kind of like a, we say black, but it's really not black. It's more like a mix between navy black and charcoal. Yes. It's just hard to explain. It's, um, it's a pretty color. It's and very beautiful. The, um, the paint store was familiar with both of the colors. Yes. So I don't think we're going to make a mistake either way we go. 
I don't think so either. Especially if we use a light color countertop. Yeah, and we're doing light color walls, so it's going to be a contrast. So that's 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 what we're leaning towards. We, and of course, we could change our mind. We've changed our mind on cabinet colors probably three times. Well, y'all know that my my end goal is to have a double wall oven because I've never had the ability to to cook two things at two different temperatures. And I like to cook. I like to cook every day. Right. And I like to cook a, a turkey on 200 <laughs> degrees. And I like to cook a broccoli and cheese casserole on 350. Yes. And so I like to, you know, have that balance. That's right. Two ovens. And I told Mary Carl to get ready because if I do get this double oven, then I'm going to have two get different ready. casseroles at two different temperatures and do you know what her answer was i don't know what a casserole is no i oh, don't like casseroles. i don't like casseroles and i said well that's funny because the like when you had that sweet potato casserole you didn't complain and when you had that poppy seed chicken you didn't complain <laughs> Did you complain she's gonna be happy she's gonna be happy she did ask me for more zucchini bread yesterday double wall oven double wall oven you could cook mm -hmm. a zucchini bread and cook a the poppy seed casserole <laughs> yeah, that's right at the same time mac and cheese at the same at time. the same time i did um while i was in while y'all were at the movies you know i went in lowe's and went in some of uh -huh. course home decorator stores right. and such and i did happen to take a stroll through the appliance section and they had a double wall oven and i'm not gonna lie i opened both of them just to see was what it a 30 inch it was a 30 inch did you I, practice did you i just opened them up and took a peek inside you should have went and got some pans i should have and just practice i should have they wouldn't have said nothing they wouldn't have you could have said i'm just dreaming i'm just putting in there putting in there and then you could have sat over there by the sink they would have called <laughs> the law on me <laughs> but i think that uh i think that we're gonna we're going to get back in the groove and, and have some cog kill cornbread and some, oh my gosh. we're going to grow some black eyed peas in, out here on the 40 and Ooh. we're going to shell those peas Ooh. with Jason's granddaddy pea sheller. Oh, I got my antique pea sheller. It's been in my family for 75 and listen, years. Listen to this. I'm going to milk the goats to Ooh. use the milk for the cornbread with Ooh. a yard duck egg to go in it. Oh goodness. Isn't that sounding wonderful? Oh, I can taste it right now. I mean, this is coming. Ooh. It is coming. Mm. In August, it's coming. September. But hey, <laughs> hey, either way, either way, I'll be happy with it. You're, you'll be hungry, won't <laughs> you? Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> I'm getting oh. hungry right now just thinking about it. Oh, gosh. I miss cornbread. I know. It's mm. just not the same. Now, I will take my pan over to Mama's oven yeah. and, and cook cornbread. But I have to go back and forth. And, y'all, it is such a pain with a hot cast iron skillet going. It's not far. It's just mm -hmm. it's difficult. It is difficult. It will be much easier when it I get my double oven. And I like to cook my cornbread on 450. So while my cornbread's cooking in my top oven. There you go. My yeah. Your, your, your uh, blackberry cobbler. My blackberry cobbler can be cooking in the bottom one at three fifty. Right. That's right. Yeah. Hey y'all, there'll be some nights. This ain't no lie. We'll eat cornbread and black eyed peas, that's and right. that's it for that's supper. Right. <laughs> and oh, man, it's so good too. I have always oh, loved dried lima beans. My mama used to cook them, that's and right. she would soak them overnight to get them big and plump. That's right. And so I, I've never cooked dry lima beans myself. I've never done it and because I've always them. been intimidated mm -hmm. by it. Um, I know you got to soak them and, you know, it just sounds intimidating. But I'm going to have my cornbread mm -hmm. and my dry limas going mm -hmm. and my blackberry cobbler. Mm -hmm. And we just may call that a meal. You know, I was telling you the other day, I remember growing up as a kid, dry lima beans uh -huh. and my mama and daddy. And I don't know if I'm the only one, that, if my family was the only one that did this, but they would take their cornbread, dry lima beans, and mix it up and put ketchup on top of it. Oh, goodness. And I, to this day, I can remember that. I thought you were just going to say that you remember no. them eating it together. No, no. Because they crumbled, it, they mixed it. It was, and I, to this day, I remember that. You know what's crazy? At the fair yeah. that we've gone to all of our lives, the Lions Club yes. Fair in mm -hmm. Dallas County. At the lines, at the, hmm, what booth is it? The Moose Lodge yeah, booth. Yeah, yeah, They sell. <laughs> dry lima? Dry lima beans and cornbread at the fair for fair food. that's good. That's just, that's southern right there. That's <laughs> when you go to the fair and you can get dry yeah. lima beans and cornbread you and sweet tea. Black eyed purple horse too at the fair. Can I, you? I mean, uh, 
like I peas or we Where? pick out purple holes. I've seen, them. I've seen them at that booth, yeah. And a big old sweet tea. And you can get as many refills as you want for a dollar. Mm. <laughs> as I was walking through TJ Maxx today, you know what I saw? What would you see? I saw one of those little tea kettles. Yeah. Um, I used to just boil my tea on top of the stove in a pork, a you know, yeah. pan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, then I got fancy and I got me one of those tea kettles that whistles. And remember, oh, I remember that, yeah, because I could walk into the other room and it would whistle <laughs> when it started boiling. That's right, and it was the best thing since sliced bread. And I don't know where mine might be now. Yeah, did, I'm, did you I, buy another one? No, okay. I didn't buy another one because I'm hoping mine <laughs> is packed yours. up I and in you. good shape. I got you, and and not damaged, you know, from being yeah, in storage. Yeah, yeah, but all I could think was Milo's has been so good to us. <laughs> Milo's, they need a sponsor. Milo's sweet tea has been so good to us. Oh, I never in gosh. a million years thought I'd be buying a gallon of tea. Y'all, if you're from the south. And you've bought if you if you've ever tasted any type of sweet tea this that comes in a can or a jug, it tastes like the yuck. And how Milo's does it? I don't know. I don't because it tastes just like the sweet tea. It tastes that just we like would what make I make in our house. And sweet tea, I know there's a lot of people that are going sweet tea. What? Sweet tea is a staple of the South. It's you know it's tea that's got sugar in it and we and it's iced down uh-huh. it's iced sweet tea we don't drink it hot here we don't drink it hot here we're not from england no and it's just and it's just um a staple here in the south and that's just what you drink with every meal and milo's taste just like homemade sweet tea and how they i don't know how they do it i don't know how they do it and y'all know our camper fridge it's about this big yeah. But we always have Milo's tea in it. Yes. And it's not like I can just go, I can have two, one for a backup, because I don't have anywhere to put it. <laughs> but you better believe that when that <sighs> the jug starts getting low, yeah. somebody's going to add it to the shopping list. Yes. Because it's going to get picked up at the next visit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So Milo's sweet tea is going to be, yeah. There have been times when I poured the, the last into a solo cup just so I could get the next gallon in the fridge. <laughs> Because we don't have room for it. <laughs> have room for it. Oh, my gracious. So, yeah. You, you think we'll answer some for questions? Silo, uh, Milo's sweet tea. Silo's sweet tea. Silo's sweet tea. Yeah, we can Let answer Let me tell some y'all questions. something funny before we get off the subject of sweet tea. Okay. So, when you do add it to your shopping list with, with that lady that starts with the name A, mm-hmm. L-E-X-A, you say, add Milo's tea to the shopping list. Mm-hmm. Every time you say, add Milo's tea to the shopping list, she says, I've added Milo's tea to the shopping list. Every time. But then, if you tell her to add Milo's tea to the shopping list, she says, I've added Milo's tea to your shopping list. She don't speak Southern. She sure don't. But sweet tea sure does. Jeff Bezos. Is it Bezos? Yeah. And he's work on that. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> he needs to work on some Milo sweet tea. Well, he needs to work on, on A. I don't want to say her name because people will start going off. I know. Off, well, that's why we call her A around here. We call her A house. around here. So, yeah. You want to answer some questions? <laughs> I think we should. Y'all start sending them in. How old can Nugget get? How old can Nugget get? Oh, goodness. 15 20, I want 20? to say. He's going to be there. It, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty on up there. 15 or 20. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Yes. Yeah. Um, somebody said Texas. Somebody Thanks. said Milo's is owned by women only. Well, ain't that something? That's why it tastes so darn good right there now. They know what they're doing. <laughs> Milo's is good. It is good. But um, when I was pregnant with Mary Carl, we had to go to Birmingham. because that's Somebody where said I, they call it A2. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I was pregnant with Mary Carl. We had to go to Birmingham because I had previously had a surgery that required oh, yeah. me to have a C-section. Oh, yeah. And so um, our we used the OBGYN in Birmingham, and Jason went with me to every checkup. I did. Every single checkup. He never missed one. So on the way back one day, um, you know how you have those cravings when you're pregnant? Yes. Well, I was craving a hamburger. You and were. so we thought we'd just go through the drive through at Milo's, Milo's, <laughs> and, and see, um, you know, how the hamburger filled my craving. Mm-hmm. Well, their hamburger has barbecue sauce on has it. some type of special sauce i call it barbecue it. sauce i don't no know what it is. it is it reminds me you know what it reminds me of their sauce reminds me of um um gosh darn it 
what is it in rice? Um, like beef tips and rice. The gravy in beef tip, beef tips and rice. That's what it reminds me. Okay. Of. You know what I'm talking about? So the gravy part. I didn't make it out of the drive thru before it told me it did not agree with me. Yeah. And when, I can't eat there anymore. Yeah. I can I can go and have a sweet tea. Yes. And I, I can't I can't eat there anymore. You had the bad pregnancy the, experience there, so the, that yeah. was it. Sorry, my Milo. Yep, but sorry, we, Milo. But we we do support your sweet tea. I don't know what I did. How do I get back? I don't know. I don't know what you got going on there. I'll go over. Let's see here. Oh, I, I got it. Let's I got see it. here. Okay. Um, they want to know if Arlo's still here. Arlo is still here. Yeah, he's still here. They just stay. It's so hot outside, y'all. And I, you know, Arlo. Before we started building the house, he would follow me around and do stuff. But with construction going on, and there's people going in and out all the time, I'm just worried that something's going to happen to one of the dogs. So we just kind of keep them locked up. Um. I'll try to show him more. It's just usually it's I just get up hot. early and it's you know, hot. You know, I feel like camper. come come fall, you're gonna see that zoomer again yes. because he's gonna be Jason's sidekick. He will. He's just it's too hot, and you can literally have a heat stroke out there. It's so it is hot. hot. It is really hot. Yes, Milo's is the name of the restaurant. Um, so many people want to know where your shirts came from. Uh, I get them from Academy Sports. Um, and y'all, I don't. I love these shirts and I started, I wore them last summer too. Um, but they've gotten, I guess, cause my colors were kind of dull. I've gotten a lot of bright colors and they've caught a lot of people's attention. So these are just fishing shirts. And so they're like 50, it was like 50 UV rating UPF. So they're, they're good on that aspect, but also they're super cool. I don't know what material this thing's made out of, but they're very breathable. Yes, they they're vented. They're vented all quick. the way around. I mean, if you could see the back side of this shirt, it is it's literally got, white, and you can see his skin. It's, got it's vented vent. all the way on the back. See that? That's vented. I mean, it's like naked. <laughs> right there. You can see the vent goes all the way around. And it's under your arm, too. Yeah, it? they're, just, they're just so comfortable in this, in this heat, and... And that's why they're way cooler than a t-shirt. Yeah. And that, that's why I started wearing them. I just, they just. And besides, he looks pretty too. Oh. <laughs> Doesn't he? <laughs> I mean, everybody wants a pretty man. <laughs> oh, I mean, mine's this, pretty. This keeps me cool when I'm dancing. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Peacock Egg, she's still sitting. She is still yeah. sitting. She's um, probably got, what's today? Today's, what's today? Thursday? Wednesday? Thursday. What's today? Thursday, right? Uh, yeah, Thursday. we went over this before today. <laughs> y'all, y'all know me. There's two things I can't keep up with, and that's dates and names. And so oh, thir goodness. today's is Thursday. So she's getting close to, I'm thinking, seven to five days left. Seven to five days. Somewhere in there. I, I mean, we we check on her several times a day. Yes. And y'all, you literally think every time she's not here, and then you look a little closer, and she's sitting right there. But yes. it's just her camouflage. Yeah, she is totally camouflaged. I think I saw somebody from Australia ask how hot it is here. I think the heat index today was around 110-ish. Um, our big thing here, though, is not the heat. And, it, and, 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 and if you've never experienced our humidity, the humidity here is what's so bad. Our dew points stay in the mid-70s. And it's just rough. Okay, people didn't catch the name of the where the shirts came from. Academy Sports. Academy Sports. And they Magellan. don't sponsor us. No, I wish they would. Um, the Magellan. the name brand is Magellan, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe Magellan is only sold at Academy. It Sports. It is. It's Academy Sports now, line. Now, Columbia makes some yeah, that are very similar. Very. I buy these y'all because they're the cheapest. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. That's why I buy these. They're they're, they're probably ten dollars cheaper than Columbia. They're well, probably and there's other companies out there. These fishing companies that make these shirts and they can get on up there in price. But these typically are anywhere from twenty to twenty five bucks. And you can catch them though. Buy one get one free. Usually right now around Father's Day, they got sales going on them and not buy one get one free, but buy one get one fifty percent off. Yeah. So yeah. they end up being like thirty five dollars for two shirts. Yes. Which so, is, I mean, you can't buy a t-shirt for 18 bucks. And y'all, if if I find something I like, usually I'll buy more than one because, and I'll wear the same thing over and over and over again. Same with shoes, the same, my sunglasses. My sunglasses broke the other day. And I had already ordered you a backup pair, backup thank goodness. Backup pair, yep. Same one. Same one. So it's just how I am. 
um, people, some people are concerned about my mom that, that she may be left out. Mm. Y'all, she's not left out. She has every opportunity to do exactly what we do. Yeah. It's just hot. Oh yeah. And when it's this hot, she didn't want to go to a warehouse that was full of granite to mm-hmm. pick it out when she already told us what she wanted. She already told us what she wanted. She had already had yeah. it picked out. We were sending pictures matter. to her and stuff. It Talked to her on the phone. It was just a matter of us going and physically handling the we, you know scheduling. You, we physically had to walk through a warehouse. It, it, it wasn't like Lowe's or Home Depot where you go and find a sample you like. You go pick out your literal slab of granite or whatever, and it's in a uh, un air conditioned warehouse. <laughs> warehouse. It was hot. It was hot. It was hot. Yeah. Somebody wanted to know what the first thing I was going to cook was. Ooh. How about I let y'all decide? The first thing. It's going to be a pan of cornbread, but I don't know what else. Cornbread. I mean, if I get that double oven, I'm going to have to have two things at one time going. Yeah. Two You're things. Two things at one time going. Oh, I'm going to have to think on that one. Yeah. We're not growing vegetables right now because we literally have too much going on well number one we had too much going on number two i didn't have the opportunity to prep my soil for vegetables that was one of the other thing and we have nowhere to store them we have you you, you we're cooking stuff in a camper and that oven she toast she'll put six pieces of toast in this camper oven and one, they're leaning up on the side one's gonna burn it's gonna be black in, 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 in one spot and then two more won't even be cooked and then another one's going to be medium. So we just, the vegetable thing is just, uh, storage would be the number one thing. That we yeah, have that's literally right. nowhere. Our, our freeze dryer's not hooked up. Our deep freezers are slapped full. Um, but Tracy, next year's going to be Tracy different. from Just Dig It Farms yes. brought us a she box did. of vegetables the other day. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to tell you, we devoured every single bit of every it. Every bit of it. She included zucchini. She included regular yellow summer squash. That's right. She included two different types of potatoes. And we ate every bit of it. Yep. Every um, single bit of it. But had we had, we didn't have anything to do with the excess if we grew it here. We, we wouldn't. We didn't have any way to store it. Yeah, we could sell it. But I mean, what are we going to do? Open the gate and say, come in and buy it? Yeah. It we just don't have time. Do it. It, 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 right. Where we're, the situation we're in now wouldn't be a... a feasible but no. next year next year that's what i'm saying get, we're gonna plant them black eyed peas next year oh we got room to plant black eyed peas y'all. collard greens yes collard brad greens. mayhew collard greens Ooh, that's brad from tennessee i hear you buddy Beba rocha springs tennessee mm, mm. how you doing brad mm, i love some collard greens so much so i got a t-shirt that says cornbread and collard greens this woman <sighs> says she's asked her question many times What's but that? i haven't seen it I don't know. I'm going back to try to see if I can find it. Um, Somebody says something. Oh, they're going fast. Somebody says something about going to the flying peach. Peach cobbler. Ooh, I love some peach cobbler too, y'all. Tammy Mm. had something. Meatloaf. Tammy had meatloaf too. Tammy had something on the menu today that I want to try. What what was a butterfinger something? Butterfinger cake Mm -hmm. pudding. Am Mm -hmm. I right? That was it. That was it. Peach pie. Ooh, you know what? For those that have been following us for a while, Guess who loves to make pies? Me. I love yes. making pies. I do a homemade pie crust from my dear good friend, Chef, Chef Scott Peacock. I follow his pie crust recipe. I used to know it by heart. I ain't cooked in a year, so I don't know it by heart anymore. But I used to know that by heart. But that egg custard pie. And I'm going to tell you all something mm, else. Mm. I love to eat pie. Mm. Any kind of pie. <laughs> I don't care what kind of pie it is. I learned this year that I even like tomato pie. Oh, that's right. Tomato sure pie. Did. Mm. Somebody says they make a Butterfinger one. Mm. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, you know, Tammy might still be there. I could run over there and get me some. You know she's staying, she's staying open late tomorrow. No, Saturday. Sorry. No, they're closed Saturday. Oh, they're staying open. They're staying late tomorrow then. Open they're closed late tomorrow. Saturday. Unless they sell out. Um. What's up with the old truck? I've heard seen that one come by. Uh, well, the young man that is that I bought the truck from that's working on the truck. I haven't been, uh, I've just been so tied up with the house and the farm that I haven't been, you know, communicating with him or, or telling him, you know, let's go with the truck. Let me go send you some parts or that kind of thing. So, so it's just, he's just probably waiting on me more than anything. Yeah. He's, um, he's waiting on us to get him some more parts so yeah. he can. You know, continue to work on it. And we don't, 
we don't even have anywhere to park it right now. There's yeah. so many people that are coming and going that if we had it parked, it'd be in the way. Yeah. So we're not in a hurry, but we will get it at yes. some point. Once the house is built, that would be a um, that would be a uh, something that I'll get started on pretty quick. This person said they brisket. had never I love brisket. But I cook it on the grill. They had never had collard greens. Got to oh, try collard poor. greens, y'all. y'all. Got to try them. Got to try them. But hey, there's a right way and wrong way to cook collard greens, though. But you you gotta you gotta gotta try them. You really gotta try them. What movie did you go see? We went and saw Doctor Strange's newest movie. Uh, me and Mary Carl, we like everything, and that was that's what we went and saw the day. Um, we could have saw the new Jurassic Park movie, but we decided to watch the Doctor Strange movie. Somebody said, where do we live? We live in Chilton County in yep. Alabama. That's right. Somebody wants to know our chef Peacock's recipes online. They are online, y'all, but listen, I wish I had it with me. Scott's got a cookbook called The Gift of Southern Cooking. And y'all, that is, if you want to know Southern cooking, and this is what's great about Scott's cookbook is it's not none of this fancy dancy stuff that you can't go pick up at the grocery store and got it is hardcore earth, hardcore southern, southern cooking food. and you can buy everything most of it in that cookbook from the grocery store the if you're ingredients in the south. <laughs> yeah and that is I'm telling y'all that is the awesomest cookbook you'll ever own and again it's called the gift of southern cooking mm -hmm. and it can be bought on Amazon yes so um, if you saw mine, you were like, oh, my, it is war. I, I got you can see like ingredients been dropped on it. And it's but hey, he told me one time that, that is the biggest compliment that you can give a cookbook writer is that your cookbook is wore out and, and uh, nasty. I mean, pretty much what you can put it, we don't care. But uh, yeah, that's uh, the gift of Southern cooking. Y'all, that, that cookbook, I'm telling you, is amazing. You can tell by what we like to cook most because the pages are just worn slap out worn slap you out. can go right to it yeah now there's a recipe that we have on a few recipes that we have on our website there which is, is coghillfarm.com go to our recipe section there's a recipe section it's got things such as okra pancakes or fritters yes turkey hash yes i believe that's on there i think we got his um uh, his persimmon cobbler on there. Yes. Um, and it'll usually it, it should say Scott Peacock's persimmon cobbler. So we got some recipes on our website, some of our favorites. Some of them, but you yeah. you need to buy the the um buy the, the cookbook if you're interested in cooking good Southern food. Oh my because gosh, it's, it's so good. It's just it's just a way to do it. Mm, um, how about mm. the pond, Jason? This is something for you. The to pond. Address. The pond. We made a video last month about the pond. Uh, our pond is a runoff pond which means that we're going to depend on a lot of runoff to start filling it up for us. Y'all, we've had terrible, I, mean, I don't want to call it, I guess, it, are we in a drought? We, we have been in a drought. We haven't had any rain, and it's 110 degrees heat, heat, heat index outside, so the pond's not filling up right now. So come wintertime, it should start filling up pretty good bit. And um, I got a ram pump set up. That's going to go into a creek spring on our property. Then I'm going to try to start pumping water into it as well. And um, it won't be a heavy flow of water. It'll no, just be a no, slow steady. trickle. Yeah. So nothing's going to happen overnight. And we knew that when we agreed to build the pond. Um, we knew that it, the only way to get it filled up really, really fast is to dig a well. Yeah. And we're not spending the amount of money that it takes to to dig a well before mm. we see if it can be filled up. Right. We'll naturally. cross that bridge. Yeah. We're we'll cross that bridge. We're thinking for it to be fully filled up anywhere from a year to a year and a half, give or take, depending on mother nature, depending on mother nature. I saw somebody ask, can we grow pecan trees here? Absolutely. We're in pecan tree country pretty much. And y'all get this. We had a lovely couple uh -huh. gift us two pecan trees from petals from the past uh, a week or two ago. And I'm going to plant them this fall on our property. It's kind of too hot for me to plant them now. So I'm babying them right now. I got them over there by the greenhouse. So I'm going to take care of those guys and baby them and plant them this fall. And these new pecans start producing within 10 years is what they say. So maybe in 10 years we'll have some pecans. I hope Miss Carol Manusco 
yeah. is headed this way because she made ham, red eye gravy, oh, potatoes, such collard a mouth. with a bit of streak, a lean in them, oh. and some cornbread tonight. Oh, girl. Um, a lot of people have wanted to know, when are we going to put Mildred and Moody together? Uh, probably soon. Only the issue is right now is I don't know how we're going to get, I don't know how we're going to move Mildred. Well, here's my thing, y'all. Mildred is not a very big cow. She's not very big. She's not very big. And, and I don't know that she's going to be that big of a cow. I don't know And either. I just don't want her to get hurt. I don't want to do something that would harm her. Of right. course, they can see each other through the fence the way it is now. Yes. They do move back and forth. I just want to make sure everything is hunky dory yes. before we make the big move That's she right. she will go into heat no yeah. matter what happens she's a cow and she's gonna cycle yeah moody is a steer but he still has hormones it kind of like tip yeah i mean because tip still i mean he still has fixed. Hormones. him and moody are both fixed but i just don't know what's gonna happen if she goes in the heat i don't know i don't know if well he's... she goes in the heat once a month is he gonna is he gonna get frisky you know, even though nothing can happen, I, I, I don't know. And he's so big, y'all. I just, we just don't want Mildred to get hurt. I don't want her to yeah. get hurt. Yeah. And we're not yeah. in a big hurry to get her out. Yeah. It's not like she's, nobody's beating up on her. She's not beating up on anybody. Mm -mm. Everybody's happy. So it's kind of like, don't mess up a good thing. When, you, when you got a good thing going, why and, mess it up? And I know the mama goats don't want us to take her out because she's a dang good babysitter. That's right. Shoot, Aunt Mildred's good. Um. Have y'all had a poke salad cake? Uh, no. I have not had a poke salad cake. No poke salad cake. That was a new one to me. Uh, somebody wants to know. Is Mildred what my... a Jersey cow? No, Mildred is a, uh, actually Mildred is a meat cow. Um, she's a cross between, what was it? Do you remember? I wish you wouldn't have brought that a up. A Charlay? Yes, and a... a Charlay and an Angus. And an Angus. Um, yeah. Somebody wants to know if I have a recipe for a poppy seed casserole. Girl, it's been so long since I cooked poppy seed casserole. I, <laughs> I don't cannot think it's on the website. It's not on the website, yeah. but just Google poppy seed casserole. Um, I had one that I used to make that was yeah. in a Morgan Academy cookbook. Not mm -hmm. that that's going to mean anything to you, but it was a Pat Labby recipe, and it was awesome. It was good. Um, but I don't, I don't have my hands on it. No, but we will once once she gets that double oven going. We're going to put the recipes. We're going to get them going back on our we website. Are, and yeah. we're going to show us cooking them we're and preparing them. We are. We were doing a lot of that when we were at our um, at Little Cog. We were doing a lot of recipes at the end of our videos. And we're going to bring that back for sure. We're going to bring it back. We're going to bring back some. And we're going to get Mary Carl in on the cooking, too. She's yes. 12. She's and she's she, always helped cooking. Yeah, she yeah. enjoys she um, helping out in the kitchen. But I think, you know, it's time for her to start doing some things on her own. Yeah, And she's, that's true. she's eager to learn. So, that's true. Um, somebody said that um, Lester's moo and their new little Annabelle aren't getting along. Are they not? And, you know, that's just something that we don't. We don't want to have to deal with. Yeah. Right now, everything's fine. So everything's fine. We'll see. She's happy where she is. I just. Do we live close by Brenda Gant? Okay. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. So. Who's Brenda Gant? Brenda Gant is a cook. Oh, She's a yeah, Southern yeah, cook. Yeah, yeah, I know you're talking about now. Um, Brenda lives in Andalusia, if I'm not mistaken. Somewhere so down south. south of us. She's south yes. of us. I was in Prattville. Yeah. At the checkout. That's right. Go ahead. At TJ Maxx. Mm-hmm. And this lady says, you must have already recorded this morning. <laughs> and I looked up at her and I said, J and I started saying, Jason's doing it now. Uh -huh. And I realized they weren't talking to me. Oh, they were talking to Brenda Gant. <laughs> and I, I just, I was like, God, I didn't even realize it was her. Yeah. I mean, she's, she's an older Southern cook that yeah. lives in Alabama mm -hmm. that she's on Facebook all the time. And she's huge on Facebook. And she knows her stuff. Huge. So mm -hmm. while Brenda doesn't know me, I know Brenda. Yes, right. And I even met her in TJ Maxx. She's not going to remember that. So no need to bring it up. But y'all go give her a follow. Oh, yeah. She, she's good. She she's got good. good she too. knows yeah. her stuff. Mm -hmm. And y'all, she's a beautiful lady. And not to say she's not on her channel, on That's her right. cooking. But I just didn't even recognize her. Mm -hmm. She wasn't in the kitchen. <laughs> It's kind of like you not having this shirt on. Nobody would recognize you. <laughs> if I didn't have a shirt or hat on, that's right. I, I would be. 
Moody's Invisible. harness. Mm -hmm. Are we going to put a harness on Moody? We had one on him at one time. He the only thing he didn't care for it. We can get one on him. I just worry about leaving a harness on him. I'm scared he's going to get caught on something, and I just worry he's going to get hurt. And that's the reason why we don't we don't leave him. We had we used to have one on um, Mildred, Mildred for a little while. And she outgrew it. And she outgrew it, and it came off. And I, I just, just I just, I, just I don't want anything to happen. Yeah. And it may be overkill, but I just feel like we are so careful. Yeah. Not that others aren't. And I'm That's not right. trying to downplay anybody else or any kind of injuries that may happen because of this. But mm -hmm. we just are so. The night that you put Moody and the goats in the new area. Yeah. You didn't sleep at all that night. Mm, I worried. I worried. I worried he all worried night. He worried all yeah, night that something may happen. Something may happen. That they him. may eat too much grass mm -hmm. and bloat. Or they may step over the just senseless things. Yes. But things can happen. That's right. And worry gets the best of you. So it's best if we don't put a halter on them because yeah. it makes us have to worry. It does. And usually horses, you know, we, we, we had horses and our horse friends, they always, you know, were against putting, leaving harnesses on halters on horses. So that's, that's right. just what I got in the back of my mind. This lady said they're having bass, which, which is fish, macaroni and cheese, and oh pork and beans. Oh, gosh. Oh, my gracious. Mm. Y'all killing me over here. Y'all know what we're going to have? Y'all killing Let me. Let me just tell y'all what we're going to have. What? Y'all better get ready. When we, when we get better, moved in? No, tonight. Oh, we're going to have Baby, tonight. Baby, tonight. <laughs> tell them what we're going to have tonight. We're going to have sweet potatoes in the Instapot. Yeah. And a salad. That's right. It's going to be good, too. I thought you was going to say egg sandwich, but we'll take that, too. Well, we always have eggs. Yes. But um, I have planned out this. It's called Super Blend. And it's mm -hmm. sold at Walmart. Mm -hmm. And it's a mixture of kale. Um, broccoli. Broccoli. Carrots. carrots. And we like to use a poppy seed dressing on mm -hmm. it. And it's just something that Mary Carl loves. And it's good for you. Um, and then a sweet potato. And that's it. I mean, that's, that's we had a big night. lunch. We had so, a big lunch. So, um, we ate a full moon barbecue today. Yeah. We and I had brisket. I like And I brisket. had some, some chicken. I love brisket. Mm. I, I, I like cooking a brisket too. I think I'm way behind. I you may know, be. I don't know how I did this, but somebody said they love those salads too, girl. It's so good. Mm -hmm. They somebody they said they had pork chops on the grill. God, it's gone. Somebody, girl, what girl said she had some popcorn. <laughs> did I have popcorn? No, she said Brooke, I had popcorn. Oh, no, don't tell me that. <laughs> Jason and Mary Carl had popcorn at the movies. We did, and I didn't. You know, but Mary I... Carl's gotten so old now. You stack a buy a large and me and her <laughs> share it. I can't even do that no more. I had to buy a large, two larges. This girl, Mary Carl, loves Olive Garden. She does. Love I don't Olive Garden. care if it is ten o'clock in the morning. The child would eat Olive Garden, and <laughs> what she really likes is their salad. She loves her salad. She loves and her bread salad sticks. and breadsticks. We call them babies, and because <laughs> we have to babies. be so careful we with them. We brought the babies home with us today. <laughs> we bought the babies. We wrap them up in a blanket, which is a napkin. And we take them right out the door, oh, just man. wrapped up in the napkin, and take care of the babies. Oh. But um, my point is, is she wanted me to get her something from Olive Garden mm -hmm. to go because she wanted a salad. And I said, baby, I don't think that Olive Garden does salads to go. And she said, just call them and see. Yeah. So I kept calling them, and nobody would answer the phone because they want you to order online. Yeah. Well, I didn't have Wi-Fi, and I didn't have Olive Garden app. And so finally, I I got service from yeah. Lowe's, enough service to place an order. Well, when I placed the order, I said, Mary Carl, do you want the kids' spaghetti? And she said, No, Mama, I want the big people's portion. And she wasn't kidding either because <laughs> no, as soon as I kidding. got it, she consumed the salad and the spaghetti and a couple of the babies. Wow. A mm, couple of the babies. Somebody asked about the wasp, how are they working in y'all? I really don't know. I don't have anything to compare it to. That's the only thing. I don't have anything to compare it to. We do have flies, but I don't think the wasp would totally would eliminate all the flies. But in my opinion, our fly issues not that bad. Um, so I, I don't. The only, the really, the only animal we have that has a fly issue is Moody. Yes. And so we're doing the wasp. We had somebody, um, a viewer, send us the uh, Redmond garlic salt block 
we had our main man, my big buddy, Lester, from I'm a Survivor. He sent me the other day three gallons of the spray he uses on his cows, and it works awesome. And we're doing, what else we're we doing? We got the wasp, we got... Uh, the, oh, the fly tags. Oh, I ordered Moody some fly tags today. Because Moody already, when we got him, he had those tags in his ears and we took them out. And, you know, we're like, well, we're just going to, you know, leave the tags out. Yeah, because the reason, they were so old that they yeah. didn't need, they, and it was winter. It was winter. We didn't need them at the time. But come to find out, if you don't know, those tags are for, you know, for marking if you had a lot of cattle. But, of course, we don't have a lot of cattle. We, ours would say one and two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the tags have, uh, have some type of insecticide in it, some kind of way. I don't know how it works, but it helps with flies. It does. So I got some of those. So Moody's not going to have the fly tags. He's got the Lester spray. He's got the garlic salt block that uh, one of our viewers sent us, and I'm doing the wasp. So we should be good. I think we're going to be good. I think so, too, because when you um, you did put the repellent on Mildred and yeah, it that Lester it, sent us that Lester sent yes. us and it started working almost immediately. And she still doesn't have flies. And Jason was kind of spraying Moody down with a water hose. Yeah. So his was his having, getting warm. You know, yeah, it was getting yeah, washed yeah, off. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mildred, she gets up under the portal hood. And, mm -hmm. You know, she finds shade. She didn't need to be squirted off, but it's still working. It's still working. It usually if I don't have to wet Moody down. Or if I don't wet Moody down, he usually comes. If I'm filling up the waters, I can tell if he wants to be squirted or not. And it, it lasted five days. I mean, with no fly on it whatsoever. Um, it's called piranha is what Lester sent us. So, and um, so thank you, Lester, for the piranha spray. Um, somebody said that, you know, you can get that uh, uh, Olive Garden Italian dressing at the store. Yes. And you can, and I do buy it. Mm -hmm. But it's just something about somebody else making a salad for it you, is. I think. And it's not like she eats everything in it. She doesn't eat the black olives. She doesn't eat the onions. She doesn't eat the banana pepper. <laughs> she doesn't eat the croutons. But she eats the Parmesan cheese and the lettuce and the dressing and she, but you know eat y'all know if you got a kid that eat something and like something you're gonna get it that's right that's right you yeah. don't get it i saw you... that walker farms on here oh really yep. hey walker farm but yeah if you if you have a kid that likes something and you, you know you, 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 you know it. as picky as kids are you know you're gonna you you're gonna get it but here's what I do is, is I'll go to the store and I'll buy, you know, a bag of iceberg lettuce because she only likes the iceberg lettuce. Right, right. And it'll sit in the refrigerator. I don't care if I if I fix the salad or what. It'll it'll sit in the refrigerator and she won't eat it. It's just something about eating it from somebody else. I saw where somebody asked where we're going to grow meat chickens once we got settled in. Y'all, we did meat chickens for a restaurant. And a big catering service for five years, and we're literally I'm burnt out. Still burned out on doing meat chicken. It's not and, to say never will never ever ever do them again. Yeah, and and that's the that's the honest truth. And we like to be honest with people. Mm -hmm. And we just got to the point where we we didn't enjoy doing it. Yeah. And when you don't, when you when you're to the point where you just despise thinking about having to do something it's time to move on yeah we we, we really got because we were doing 100 every six weeks yeah, yeah. And, and well not um, we would have more than that growing at the time yeah they would yeah. always be growing yep and that was all year 12 months out of the year it was um, for five years so yeah we were doing and it was just me and you and then i say it was just me and you then you know our buddy kendall would help us and then my main man mike key started helping us there at the end so we did get burned out on it. And, it, and Mary Carl was young, and Jason was only off on the weekend. Yeah, and it took up our whole entire weekend. And she got to where she would say, "We got to process chickens this weekend." Yeah. And it wasn't that she mind helping; it was just that it was an all day thing. It was an all day thing, and yeah, it was rough. But don't think that you shouldn't do it because we don't like to do it. Because if that's something you're interested in doing, go for it. Go for it. Somebody said, wait, black olives are not candy. That's you. I love olives. <laughs> I love green olives. I love black ah, olives. Oh, I, don't, I don't care what yeah. kind of olive it is. I love them. We actually have an olive tree we that do. is supposed to produce olives. And the first time I see it put, produce an olive, I'm going to pick it off. I just don't know if it's going to produce here in Alabama. I don't though. think it is it's either. It's rough. I don't know if it likes it. A lot of times, a lot of times, you know, 
you'll see something that grows in the Mediterranean area and you think of this going to be hot and all that, but they don't have the humidity we have here. So therefore it doesn't grow well here. Number one is like, um, um, lavender. We, we have a hard time growing English lavender or just lavender in general because of our humidity. It's so rough that lavender just struggles so bad here. The only type of lavender that we can halfway grow is Spanish lavender. Is that what Tracy grows? That's what Tracy's got, yeah. Okay. Because well, Tracy, of course, does does very well. Um, they get so tickled at the restaurant, Main Street Cafe, which is a local restaurant here, mm-hmm. because it's it's nine times out of ten when we go to eat, Mary Carl orders all vegetables. Yeah. You can get a vegetable plate, which yeah. is four vegetables. Or, you know, the main thing is a meat and three, it's which is meat one three. meat and three vegetables. Great. But she'll get purple whole peas, dried lima beans, a sweet potato, and a salad. I don't know if I ever had a, I have had a meat from there. Yeah. it's um, I always get all the vegetables because their vegetables are so good. Yeah, it's always purple holes. They got sweet potatoes, steamed cabbage. And they get tickled because they're like, limas. I wish my child would eat like that. <laughs> and she, this is this is even crazier because she'll eat sweet potato casserole if it has marshmallows on top. Yeah. But if it has the brown sugar, she, won't eat she it. don't like it. She don't like it. It she seems like, like it. you know, the kid would like the brown sugar version. There are some olive trees near Pensacola Beach Do that they... produce. Oh, wow. I have to figure out what they are. So maybe we're um mm-hmm. maybe we're counting our maybe we're not counting our chicks before they hatch. How's that? That'll work. Do y'all like oyster stew? I like um I like chowder. I don't know if I have an oyster stew though. Um I think that's gonna be a northern thing. Remind me to address about somebody thinks we brought home three baby emus last month. Let's go back to that. I wanted to address the oyster thing. Okay. Um, when Mary Carl was two years old, oh, we yeah. were at the beach. Mm-hmm. And Jason likes baked oysters. I love baked oysters. He Ooh. loves baked oysters. Mm. And we were sitting outside at a restaurant, and he had ordered baked oysters. Mary Carl's sitting right here beside me. Jason's sitting across from me, and he has his baked oysters. Well, she and I ate something that wasn't oysters, seafood-wise, but she, hers wasn't seafood at all. Right. We got back to the hotel and the child, she was about 18 months, I guess. Yeah, probably She so. was covered from head to toe in hives. Mm-hmm. And this being my first and only child, being at the beach, of course, I was we freaked out. Panicked. Yeah. And so I, go, you know, did a little quick Google search and it. We, of course, had Benadryl with us, prepared for any kind of problem. Mm-hmm. And we gave her the Benadryl, but we were very precaution because we thought that her throat might close up or mm-hmm. she might have some other symptoms. Luckily, that's all it was. It all was it over was. and it never came back. And the pediatrician said it was probably just her body's overreaction to I, something different. Well, I had it on my hands and when I touched her is what caused it to um caused her to break out like that. Somebody asked that we ate at the hickory chip. Yes. yes we love the hickory chip. They okay, got back some to the emus. Good ribs. They do. Back to the emus. Back to the emus. Okay. The video that you saw Mm -hmm. was probably from when we got Nugget. Mm -hmm. And we brought Nugget home with two other emus. That's right. They were um, from the same place. Mm -hmm. And we initially went to purchase two emus. Was it one or two? Two Two. emus. We get to the (laughs) back up. First of all, we thought it was in Auburn, Alabama. That was number one. That was number one, which was about two hours from us. Right. So we went on an afternoon planning to go to Auburn, Alabama when Jason got off work. Well, after putting in the address and everything, we realized it wasn't Auburn, Alabama. It was Auburn, Georgia, which was what four and a half, five hours Something from us. Like five hours from us, just say. <laughs> so we ended up Who knowing knew? that we couldn't make this a day trip. We had to spend the night in a hotel. Mm-hmm. So we went down the night before. And the next morning, the lady was going to meet us with our two emus. Yes. That night, she messaged me, and she realized that we had Cog Hill Farm. Yes. And she started watching some of our videos. And she said that she had told us that she was going to, um, you know, give us the payer or sell us the payer. Mm-hmm. But they had this one very special emu who had lived in the house from day one. From day one, mm-hmm. because this particular emu hatched before all the other ones, and they were going on a beach trip. And so 
this particular emu came inside, stayed with their daughter, slept on the couch with the daughter, mm -hmm. watched movies with the daughter, had a blanket, had a stuffed animal, and they were wanting to offer him free of charge to us. His name, they had already named him. They had already named her. Her. Nugget. Nugget. They thought it was a her because she had a little swirl on the top of her head, which sometimes indicate female. So we were like, oh my gracious, we can't take three emus. We were living at Little Cog. Yes. We were already questioning ourselves about getting one emu. Definitely already worried about one emu. But, uh, you know, we were going to get a pair. Right. But three? Yeah. How, how are we going to have room for three exactly. emus? And so um, I told her we would think about it and I would let her know the next morning. Well, the next morning, she said, I'm going to bring all three of them, and y'all can decide. Mm -hmm. So she brought all three of them. She brought two in a cardboard box and Nugget in her lap. <laughs> so Mary Carl was 10 years old at the time. Yes. Had always wanted an emu, and she fell in love with him. Of course, all of us did. All of us fell in love all with Nugget. All of us fell in love with mm -hmm. her. So I get on the phone, and I start saying... um. To our friends, Kathy and Stan at JK Farm mm -hmm. in Shorter, Alabama. Would y'all be interested in a pair of emus? We think it's a pair. Yes. The lady thought she was giving us, selling right. us a pair. Right, right. They said, oh my gracious, do we have time to talk about it? And I said, okay, you know, you got in between Auburn, <laughs> Georgia and Shorter, <laughs> which was basically Auburn, basically, Alabama. Yeah, between Auburn and Auburn. Auburn and Auburn yeah. to make this decision. That's right. These two were our friends. Um, we knew that they had the same interest in mind as us. And they got like a gazillion acres. They got yeah. plenty of room. That wouldn't be a problem, but they mm -hmm. didn't have a fenced in area where they could live forever. Fenced in. Right. She calls me back when we get a little on the other side of Atlanta, I guess it was, and mm -hmm. said, we'll take the emus. We knew if we took them home, oh gosh, then we could never part with them. No, and we knew we didn't have room for three emus, right? Because two of them were going to be the same sex, right? And if two of them were males and one of them was a female, you know what that could be? Probably start fighting. Probably start yeah. fighting. We didn't want that, so we stop at J.K. Farm, and we give what is now Pepita, yes, and Goldie, Goldie. And they are a bonded pair yes. that live at JK Farm. Mm -hmm. She's never laid any eggs, no. although they're they're of age this year. We we thought we may see some babies this year, right. but they didn't she didn't lay. Right. And they are happy pair, and we are happy with our gender sexed DNA tested boy. Boy yes. nugget. Yeah, we had nugget DNA tested and he is a boy. He is a boy. Yep. And then, I know we've answered just a million times. We still get asked all the time, though, why doesn't Nugget have a, a, a female? And generally speaking, females can be a kind of little rough around the edges. And uh, they tend, they can't, they can be ugly and nasty. So that's the reason why we've never gotten a female emu. Not to say we won't ever get Nugget something. I don't, we don't know. Y'all want to know something? Nugget's never seen another emu in his life. No, I those mean, emus rode in the back seat in that cardboard box yeah. on the way to Shorter. Yeah, and that was the only time he was ever around another emu. Yeah, he hatched out of his shell under his daddy, which yeah. the male sits on the eggs. Right, and he immediately came inside because those people were going out of town. So he never saw his parents. Right, and he's never been around another emu. So I don't know what he would react I don't like. Know either. If he, I'm sure he'd hiss and yeah. he'd stomp and he'd run. He may get over it. He may not. I don't know. I don't know what he. I, he saw I a really butterfly don't. the other day. He was chasing them. He was chasing songbirds this morning. <laughs> <It's> so funny. <laughs> he was chasing songbirds this morning. But um, Pepita and Goldie have a pond at JK Farm. Yes. And uh, Stan and Kathy will sometimes send me videos where they they don't actually swim out into the middle where it's deep, right. but they do wade down, down in, in the yeah. pond. And I'm I'm looking forward to the day that one day we can let Nugget out to walk with us and we'll walk him down yep. to the pond. And once everything's safe, once everything's safe, settled down, yeah. we yep. will, we will, um, he's not going to stay out all the time. No, no. but um, we'll get him to where we can walk him around That's a right. little bit. And he never veered far from us at the old farm. And um, I want him to be very familiar with this territory. <laughs> before we do that. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, let's see. We'll take a couple of more questions and then we will, call it quits 
Why is Scott? So Scott's not skittish at all. Oh no, not Scott for a Peacock. Scott is one of yeah. the most tame peacocks you will ever yeah. see. I can walk right up to Scott. Pretty and good. the the girls are like that too. Mm -hmm. We have two females. In case y'all didn't know that, I can't go pet and love on them like Nugget. He, but, no, but um, as for a peacock, Scott's pretty darn. He he tame. is he yeah. is not at all. Me, Carl, and I were talking outside while we were as close to me to you. Mm -hmm. I mean, he comes right up about to you. Yeah. how tame he is. Yeah. There have been times when we've had to catch him to look at something, right. and you can literally catch him. I mean, you'd spend hours catching a normal peacock right. if you ever caught him. No peacock babies yet. No peacock babies yet. How are the goats doing? They're doing wonderful. We were in Alabama. Somebody asked what state we're in. We're in Alabama, and it's I know, I know our accent doesn't, doesn't say that, but, you know. What does it sound like? We're in France? <laughs> Have oh. we used our safe room yet? We have not, but Thank I thought we might have to last knock night. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. I thought as I was taking my shoes off, and it was a thunderstorm warning, but nothing was on the radar in our area. It, it was a little bit north of us. I thought, hmm. When Nugget joined the boys, you know, I would love Nugget and Moody and the boys to hang out together in the pasture, but the only biggest issue is feed. Yeah. I got goat feed for the goats, and I got cattle cow feed for Moody. A nugget's got to have a special feed. You don't need to eat that kind of feed. Um, so that's the only reason we don't mix ours together like that. Yep. But I would love to do that. I think you would have a good time with them. How are the call ducks? The call ducks are wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, we have, I believe it is four blue pied babies that hatched this year mm -hmm. and one white one. And do you know that we think that, um, I don't know which one's the girl, Mochi or Mallow, mm -hmm. laid all those eggs. Really? But some of them came out blue pied, and I don't know how. I don't ask me. I ain't got a clue. You know I'm not no genetic expert. Somebody wanted to know a Scott named after the cookbook author, Chef Scott Peacock. He absolutely is. No, I don't have a <laughs> tattoo on my neck either. I don't, we'll that's, have that's we don't a have suntan right there. We don't have no tattoos. <laughs> we don't have any tattoos, and that is, it's it's your thing. That's fine, yeah. but it's not something that we are into. Yep, Scott Scott's a cookbook author. Yep, and a James Beard Award winning chef. He won the James Beard Award in two thousand ten or two thousand seven. Why does Mildred eat the goat feed? Okay, this is going to be our last question. We're okay. not taking any more. Boom. <laughs> That's what you said last it, time. I put my phone down. <laughs> Mildred was a baby when she came to Coghill yes. Farm. Mildred was on a bottle. Mm -hmm. Mildred one day looked at me like I had three heads and wouldn't take her bottle. Yes. And I said, I'm doing something wrong. Something's wrong. She won't take her bottle. I checked the temperature. Everything was perfect. Mm -hmm. She wanted to eat with the goats. Right. So she goes over to the trough and she starts eating with the goats. Of course, me being a mom, I was a little bit. Freaked yeah, you out, were, you to was. say the least. Can they, Can she eat the feed? I thought yeah. it was going to make her sick. Right. Because we had plans to move her in with Moody as soon as she was big enough. Mm -hmm. Well, she didn't grow like a, you know, she's not a big cow. She's just not a breed like Moody that gets huge. Right. <laughs> so I started second guessing our, you know, getting Mildred because mm -hmm. we, where were we going to put her? She's eating goat feed. That's where right. are we going to put her? Where are we going to put her? So I reach out to a friend that has a degree from Auburn University in animal dairy science. I read him off every ingredient on that bag of goat feed. He said, Brooke, there is nothing wrong with that cow eating goat feed. As a matter of fact, according to the ingredients and in the amounts in them that you're telling me, she's perf is perfectly fine for her and maybe even better for her than what you could be giving her. Not telling you to go out and feed your cow goat feed. Right. That eased my mind. The next day, I brought a bottle back out there. She wanted nothing to do with the bottle because she wanted the goat feed. And that's how the story goes. And yep. she eats goat feed. Now, if she goes in with Mildred, she will not Moody. eat goat. She goes in with Moody. Yes. She won't be eating goat feed all the time. It'll yep. be a, you know, a little bit of a weaning stage to get her off one right. feed onto another. But that's how Mildred's. We're not going to go out and feed Moody goat feed because moody's never been on goat feed all of his life yeah yeah, yeah. We, we started feeding him the the cattle feed that was recommended to us by the feed store and so the the gentleman that i spoke with that's a friend of ours he said since that was the only feed mildred had ever 
been exposed to. It's not like she was changing feeds. Right. She was going to be on that, and it was perfectly fine. Perfectly fine. Well, guys, and I'm done. I'm not looking at my phone. Don't look. <laughs> <laughs> guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode with us tonight. And, um, uh oh, hit the wrong button. Are we gone? No, we're not gone. We're not gone. I hope you guys enjoyed tonight, and uh, we're going to continue to do these lives. And we're we going to go cook a sweet potato and have some super mix. Super blend, I believe it super is. Super blend. Um, super mix sound like Mildred's feed. Well, it? you know, I was, I said I want to answer any more questions. This isn't a question, uh -huh. but um, I saw a people, few people said that they can't find that in their Walmart. And it's not easy to find because it's not sitting right there with the salad. Oh, okay. It's in an area where like cut up broccoli is. Ooh, and there's okay. other kinds you. of, you can actually, if you have the Walmart app, you can Google Super Blend. I put it up. in a Walmart pickup. Put it in a Walmart pickup and they'll pick it up for you. Okay, good deal. But um, if you have the Walmart app and you put Super Blend in, it'll show you exactly where. I guess it'll show you the vegetable area, though. It won't show you which exact area. I got you. Anyway. Well, 10-4. I hope you. I'm going to cook some sweet potatoes. You go do that. And I got to edit a video. And it might be later tomorrow, huh? Yes. Depends on how, how much I've done, I get done tonight. You didn't know I, we were going to talk this long, did you? No. Okay. <laughs> Guys, we enjoy y'all so much. Now go cook you something good. Y'all be good. <laughs>